there's a video that came out recently discussing a rather odd story that's been circulating for a really long time. It's about the 6502 microprocessor, an old CPU chip used in the very first personal computers, including the Commodore PET, the Apple II, and even early game consoles such as the Atari 2600. The story goes something like this. The first production run of 6502 microprocessors that hit the market in 1975 had a critical flaw. The rotate write instruction, called ROR for short, did not work correctly, and the company, MOS Technology, had to fess up and go fix it. Parts with a 1976 date code or later have a rotate write instruction that works perfectly fine. The problem with this story is that it's not true. Chuck Peddle, who led the team that designed the 6502, always claimed that the iconic microprocessor worked the first time. This was a point of pride for him. Chip designers love to brag if the silicon design works in the first pass. On the other hand, it's pretty easy for someone who has a revision A6502 microprocessor from 1975 to run a simple test program to confirm that the rotate write instruction doesn't work. How is this not a bug? And we'll get to that in a minute. By the way, I should mention that Maskrev A6502 microprocessors with a 1975 date code are rare and highly collectible. They also look pretty distinctive with their gold-plated white ceramic package. To get to the bottom of this puzzle, I had a conversation with the original logic design engineer, Bill Mensch, back in 2021 at the Vintage Computer Festival West. The answer, as it turns out, is pretty simple. Chuck wanted a bare-bones microprocessor that would be very cheap to make, and he stripped it down to the bare essentials. One competing chip, the Motorola 6800, had a lot more features, but also cost over $300. Chuck sold his microprocessor for 25 bucks. And at this price, an enterprising young engineer bought a microprocessor from Chuck at the 1975 Westcon show. He was designing a small, inexpensive computer, and he needed a small, inexpensive microprocessor chip. He couldn't even buy the 6800 because the Motorola salespeople ignored him. That engineer was Steve Wozniak, and the computer was the Apple I. Back to the story. One of the features that Chuck left out was a rotate write instruction. Bill told me that Chuck did not think we needed rotate write, so we did not have rotate write on the first silicon. Of course, the customers came back later demanding the feature, and he changed his mind, adding the rotate write in the next revision. To put it another way, according to both Chuck and Bill, there was no bug. The Rev A6502 simply had no rotate write instruction at all. Part of the confusion about all this comes from the 6502's unimplemented instructions. Most of them don't do anything useful. Several actually stop the processor in its tracks, requiring a hard reboot to recover. Other instructions produce unstable results that seem random. If you're curious about what these other instructions do, I've linked an article about that in the video description. Another confusing thing is that the Rev A6502 also has a shift write instruction, and that actually worked correctly. So what's the difference between shift and rotate? A shift write moves the least significant bit into the carry bit, shoves everything over by one bit, and puts a zero into the most significant bit. A rotate takes the carry flag, puts it into the most significant digit, shoves everything over by one bit, and puts what used to be the least significant bit into the carry flag. Anyway, if you try to run the later 6502's rotate write instructions on the Rev A6502, you'll get an instruction that seems to work like a broken rotate left. If you didn't know the history, it would be easy to conclude that it was a bugged 6502, and that's probably how the rotate write myth began. But why take Bill's word for it? Is there a way we can peer into the silicon circuitry of a 1975 6502 microprocessor and conclusively determine if this is a bug or not? Surprisingly, the answer is that we can. Someone recently acquired one of these rare Rev A chips. It had been accidentally smashed and the tiny silicon chip inside was exposed. The chip was photographed using an optical microscope and you can look at it yourself on the internet. I've overlaid an image of this Rev A6502 with the image of a Rev D6502 so that we can compare them. So how do we understand what we're seeing? Fortunately, the Rev D6502 was reverse engineered by the folks at the Visual 6502 project, and based on their data, I was able to put together a schematic. Several years ago, I used the schematic to build a replica 6502 
out of ordinary discrete transistors on a very large circuit board. I call it the Monster 6502. This is the later version of the 6502 with the working rotate ride instruction. Based on the chip image in my schematic, let's take a look at how a rotate ride instruction gets decoded. The instruction is copied from the computer's memory and held in the instruction register. This is how the 6502 remembers what it is supposed to be doing. The register bits get fed into this ROM array, which decodes each instruction into 131 control output lines. They direct logic all over the chip to perform register transfers, arithmetic operations, address computations, branches, and all sorts of things. There's a lot of overlap. Many instructions are similar to each other and share some of the same control lines. Comparing the contents of the ROM array between Rev A and Rev D, I found three control lines that were different. Two of them control the shifter in the arithmetic logic unit. The Rev A6502 is missing some ROM bits that connect the future rotate write op codes to the ALU's shifter, but it allows the shift write instructions to control it just like the Rev D part. The third control line is where it gets interesting. On the Rev D6502, this control line is totally unique to the rotate write instruction. Nothing else uses it. I traced out that control line on the Rev A6502 and found that it goes basically nowhere. It's not connected to anything. No instruction activates this line. It branches into two paths, and neither connect any transistors. My best guess is that it was used for a different instruction that was later removed or changed during the design process. The wires were all left in place because in those days, chip layouts were all done by hand on transparent sheets using a material called RubyLith to create the artwork that was later turned into photo masks. It was easier to leave stuff in rather than to rip it out. Adding a rotate write to the Rev A6502 was surprisingly complicated. Here's the problem. The existing logic for the shift write immediately takes the least significant bit and pushes it into the carry flag, overriding the former contents. Hang on. We needed the former state of the carry flag to put it into the most significant bit. The engineers solved this by adding a special latch to hold a copy of the carry flag. The carry flag gets written to this latch before the least significant bit overwrites it. Then during the shift operation, instead of just shifting a zero into the most significant bit, they shift in the copy of the carry flag. Therefore, this is a two-step operation. First, you save a copy of the carry flag, and second, you shift everything all at once. Here's what the schematic for it looks like. It's a lot of transistors. You can find them pretty easily on the layout because they are right next to the big 6502 letters. Here's the old version, and here's the new version. To write the copy of the carry bit to the output byte, the designers had to add an entirely new data path control line. The Visual 6502 people call it add SB7, and it sets or clears the most significant bit of the output byte. The layout people had to redo this whole area to make room. To put it another way, the Rev A6502 had no way to get the carry bit into the most significant bit of the output byte. This is literally one of the most basic functions of a rotate write, and every logic designer knows this. If the 6502 truly had a rotate write bug, I'd expect to see this circuit on the chip in some form. But instead, we see nothing. Therefore, the 1975 Revision A of the 6502 has no rotate write instruction. It doesn't have the circuitry to implement it. It's not a bug, it's a missing feature. And thanks for watching. I don't do too many YouTube videos, but you can catch up with me on Mastodon or Twitter. Just look for TubeTime US. Have a great day.